All right, hello YouTube and welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm going to be covering the most important topic in Gems of War, which is the troops triptych. Uh, you, every time you get a new troop, you'll get a card that kind of looks like this, that most of the information is right here in the center, and you've got the magic information on the left and the traits on the right. And before I begin, I'm going to just let you know that everything in this video is accurate as of Gems of War version 7. Anyway, let's move on with this. Uh, we'll start with the center frame and then we'll move on to left and right as they discussion. So first, we have the mana circle. In the upper left, you can see that it is half yellow and half brown. That means that Chalcedony requires 12 mana in order to use her magic spell. And she can generate mana either by collecting yellow or collecting brown. Different troops can have different mana collection requirements. Some can only collect from one mana source, some can collect from three, and a very few can collect from all six. So that's what you get in that top left. Moving on down, you see the attack stat, which is currently 54. All of the stats that you're going to see as far as magic, attack, armor, and life are relevant, are based on her base stats. And then added to that is any stats that, um, any bonuses that you get from your own account. So. Right now it is 54, so if she is the topmost troop, which she currently is in this particular uh, sandbox lineup, then that would determine how much damage is done to the topmost player on the other side if I match skulls. Now for, for the attack, there are some other uh, ways that attack could be relevant, but I'm gonna be, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be considering the, the most likely reason to worry about that. So moving on down, you see what looks like a shield and 92, that is her armor. That armor gets uh, decremented uh, as she takes damage. So it is down to zero. Once it is down to zero, then she takes the damage to her life, which is that heart and six. Once, the, once her life has been depleted, then she is out of the game. And so that, uh, yeah. but it's worth noting that there are uh, different ways to attack uh, uh, opponents and, and be attacked where you, it'll decrement the life directly. These are things like true damage and life steal. Um, there, are a, there are a number of them, but, uh, but uh, keep in mind that the armor doesn't necessarily have to go down to zero in order to start with. Okay, then the upper right hand corner, you see the name of the troop, and then below that is the uh, location where that troop is from. So Chalcedony is from Hellcrag. You will know you will have some troops where you see two different look, and that is because that troop is a faction. Troop. So in this particular case, the Feyhound is both from Wild Court and from the Vinian Fields. Uh, all Wild Court uh, troops uh, will automatically be from the Vinian Fields because Wild Court is the Vinian Fields faction. Back to Chalcedony. You, the important thing about the, uh, particularly the Kingdom, you'll see a lot of different uh, game modes and game events where you will be restricted to only being only being able to use a troop from a specific kingdom. So if a, uh, for example, Under Inspire uh, has a restriction for Hellcrag, then I can use Chalcedony. If it has a restriction for literally every other, any other kingdom, then I. So at the bottom left, see her current level it is currently 20. 20 is the highest that any of your troops can attain. Um, the uh, Your opposition 
can sometimes seemingly go all the way to infinity with their with their levels, but your your um, troops will only cap at, 20. and that is only if they are mythic. Um, all of your troops will also start at level one. Uh, depending on your VIP level, they may start at five or ten. So, if you are spending a lot in this game, you will get some uh, some free leveling uh, for your for your contribution. Take that as you will. So, uh, the six stars below the level represent her current and base rarity. So her current rarity is mythic, and you know that because all of the stars are filled in and are teal. Uh, if only five of them were filled in and it was yellow, they'd be legendary. Four and purple, epic. Three and blue, ultra rare. Two and green, rare. One and white, common. And the maximum level I should have pointed out earlier uh, does cap based on what their current rarity is. So if it was so 15 for common, 16 for rare, 17 for ultra rare, 18 for epic, 19 for legendary, and of course, 20 for mythic. Um, now this, you may notice that there are some rays coming out of uh, the leftmost four stars. That indicates that Chalcedoni starts off as a tier epic so if you are if you need a base mythic to bring Hellcrag up to power level 10 chalcedoni even at mythic will not count towards that you'll need to actually get a troop that is a smith good luck with that in the lower right left hand corner lower left hand corner you see a bow and arrow that represents her troop role uh, which in the bow and arrow uh, is for strikers. There are only two uh, relevance to strikers. One is, is that it determines what uh, additional stats she gets if you low, if you give her an elite tier. Um, also, uh, very infrequently, you will have world, tier, world uh, events that may restrict based on troop rule. It, again, they're very rare, but, but that is usually when we're worried about when what troops are what role. Because otherwise, we don't pay it in. Now, I did mention the elite uh, level. You can see that the that compared to the Feyhound, that uh, Chalcedoni's uh, mana circle is uh, is uh, outlined in gold, as well as the top of her card and the left side of the card. So that tells you that she is an elite gold group, which is the highest uh, elite level that we currently have. There's also silver and bronze, and I'll get to that in a later video. And, but that's what the, tro the troop role is relevant for. To the right of that, you have Damon slash Kant's. What that represents is the two troop types that she is. She is half daemon and half construct. The developers, for whatever reason, did not leave enough room to completely spell everything out. Ask them, I have no idea. But just like with the kingdom, uh, the troop type will occasionally be relevant with, um, with restrictions for events. So if a restriction, if a uh, an event requires you to use daemons, then you can use Chalcedoni. Uh, constructs, you can use Chalcedoni. Elves. So, to the right of that, you have three diamonds that are currently filled in. Those uh, reflect whether you have activated the traits for that particular troop. So, in this particular case, you can see I have activated all three of her traits. For the Feyhound, you can see that those uh, diamonds are not filled in, and you can also see that the trait names are not highlighted. That uh, reflects that I have some uh, work to do for that particular troop. So that's everything that you need to know about the right-hand side. Traits are very are usually very important 
and in most cases you'll want to activate uh, as many of those as you can um and with chalcedony maybe we could we could uh stop at two because pathfinder is not going to be very relevant to her outside of the out of sight of journey events that require hell credit. Moving on to the left, we have the petrifying shot magic spell. Um, below that, you have a nice little picture that represents the spell. And below that, you have her magic stat, which is currently 45. And below that, you have what the spell actually does. And right now it deals 49 damage to an enemy, then creates three brown gems boosted by all construct out. Now the astute observer will notice that the number 49 is in magenta and the number three is just in regular black. Uh, that is because the number 49 can increase or decrease along with her magic stat. So I believe that for her, um, that magenta number is always her magic stat plus four. So the magic stat could go all the way down to zero, go all the way as high as I don't know. But, but anyway, you, um, compared to that, the three brown gems that, cre that she creates boosted by all construct allies. And in the upper right, you see that you see the boost ratio. So every construct ally she has gains in the will 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 get an additional three brown gems. But however that, ma however much or however little magic she has, she'll always create the same number of brown gems. So uh, when you're looking at uh, elite levels and looking at levels that might increase your magic stat, you all always want to look at the magic skill spell itself and make sure that you have magenta numbers that can go up when you give it, when you give the magic, otherwise, you'd be wasting uh, resources that could be used to level someone else up. Okay, so two more things to go. Um, for if you look at Egress, you can see that the that the card is very sparkly. See a, a little little light wipe that kind of goes around goes uh, past the card. That reflects that Egress is shiny troop. In fact, Egress is a shiny troop level two. You can have, for each shiny troop, you can have level one, two, or three. Uh, very few uh, cards in the game uh, can be shiny. There, I believe there's at least one for each kingdom. And other than that, most likely uh, the, the cards that have come out more recently will be able to be made shiny versus ones that have been around for so you can tell that it is a shiny level two because of the two shiny diamonds that appear above the three trait diamonds. Um, the relevance to shiny is that when you get shiny level one and three for all the troops I've seen so far, it reduces the mana cost by one. So Egress initially required 12 blue or yellow, but now it's level two. Shiny, at shiny level one, it reduced it to 11. And if I get egress to three, it will re, it'll reduce it further to 10. And then at level two, it upgrades his spell. So instead of the regular Farsight spell that he normally comes with, I have Farsight. Um, so that is everything you need to know about shiny. Um, Kind of only it, it, you can you can make troops shiny by doing well in different events, as well as opening shiny chests. And we'll cover that. Uh, the last thing I want to cover for the uh, for the troop triptych are the two green chevrons that sometimes appear near the lower right hand corner. So you can see Queen Titania has two green chevrons. There you can only get up to three up to two green chevrons at any given time. Currently, it is the week of Bright Forest, and since she is from Bright Forest, she gets 10% to all of her skills. Uh, it is also week of Fey, which is usually, uh, usually goes along with it being week of Bright Forest. Week of Fey also kind of goes along with a week of Glacial Peaks. 
So since she is Fey as well, she actually gets another 10% added to the to the weaker Bright Forest. I do not think that, I think that they add at the same time. So essentially this is 20% boost, but um, I do know that the numbers for Week of Fey and Week of Bright Forest don't seem to quite match up. But anyway, uh, so the, the takeaway from this is that uh, when it's when it's the week of a certain kingdom or week of a certain troop type, you should try to use those um, ever possible. And in a later uh, video, I'm going to be covering how to make your troops better, and I'm going to be using Feyhound as my example. So hopefully you'll be back here for that video. And if you liked this video, please consider leaving a like and or subscribing to this channel and following me on Twitch. Um, leave a comment below. Anything I got right, anything I got wrong, anything I forgot. But there's a lot of information on these cards, so that could certainly happen. Um, and also, if there's a topic that you'd like me to cover in a later video, I'll leave that in the comment below as well. I will see you in the next video.